Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have moved the most and to see if there is opportunity there or if it's just kind of a, a fad. So I will start with Urtai Decorrupted. You see that little B? So this is a foil Urtai, but it's not just any foil Urtai, it is the alternative art version. So this art is unique to this card. Now, the only way you could get this one in Plane Shift was if you found it in the pack. The amount of them is unknown. Maybe it's known now, but when it came out, it was unknown how common or uncommon this. Essentially, it was a mythic before mythic, and it was an expedition before an expedition, a masterpiece before a masterpiece. They experimented with this. It didn't go that well because people didn't even know it existed. Uh, and for the most part, I've never seen one of these in person. I, I know of them and I really wanted them, but there's so few of them. So as a collector's item and Urtai as a wizard, yes, you can expect this card to really just skyrocket in price. Now, another card that has been trending up and one to keep your eyes on is Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond, of course, is on the reserve list. And a lot of reserve list cards have been going up. Why not Mox Diamond? Mox Diamond was pretty much a version of imprint, imprint for lands before imprint becomes became something. And anytime you have fast mana, you have mana acceleration, yes, it's going to be really, really good. Um, and yes, this is a rare on a reserve list on an Otis set. It has all the factors you look at, and it's mana acceleration, which is great. It's every single factor that you would want in a card to own at long term. So every, it has the Mox name, it has the Mox lore, it has the usability. Quite incredible. And now discarding on land, which was the downfall of it actually has upside now with all the graveyard removal. Back in the past, Lion's Eye Diamond was considered one of the worst cards because there was no dreads, there was no ability to make it good. Now, as we get more and more magic cards, the card only gets better in time. And the same with Mox Diamond. All right, the judge promos. Let's talk about old school judge promos that look like this with the DCI and the little shoot. Uh, they call it a shooting star. That's what they called it. These things are not common. These things are collector's items. They are very, very difficult to get a hold of. I have not seen that many. So if you're at your local game store, you're not really going to see any of this type of stuff. Only at GPs, like if someone has a really good binder, maybe you see it. As we go on in time, cards that are collector's editions are very hard to find. They have all been going up because... I don't know if the Magic player base is growing very much, but they are getting more money. So the Magic player base is getting older. And typically when you get older, you have more money. It's exactly what's happening here. And they can go out and buy. I actually made a video later this week about like collecting old toys in general and why old Magic cards are spiking or limited edition Magic cards are spiking. It's just because the... The kids who grew up with magic are now CEOs, they own businesses, they're doctors, they, they have money to throw at magic, right? They're Martin Scorsese, whatever his name is. And okay, next, uh, Portal Free Kingdoms. This is a interesting kind of deal because anytime they could be reprinted, anytime this in the portal substitutes can be reprinted, however, why would they do it? Um, why would they do it? This is a four hundred dollar card. It, I don't. I think after a certain price point, if the price point is over two hundred, three hundred dollars, they cannot put in iconic masters because they're going to save it for something else. I'm almost certain that ten dollar booster packs are not the upper limit of what someone would pay. I feel like they could do twenty dollar booster packs easily and fifty dollar booster packs if you have the potential to get a $400 card, then yes, you would pay $50 a pack. Depends on, depends on what's in that pack, right? So I don't expect this to be in danger of being reprinted 
I think it was reprinted as a judge promo. I'm not positive. A lot of these cards were reprinted as judge promos, but this one I don't believe it was. Okay, so talking about judge promos, and that's an interesting market. It truly is a a market that has been untouched for the most part. As you can see from Morphling to go from, I assume, $5 to over $400, $450 and then go back down to 100 people are going to buy out judge promos. Uh, one of the reasons that they are, there's not many of them. They are collector's items and they don't have to be good. So let me emphasize something about these older cards. They do not have to be good. And here's, that is my biggest misconception when I was looking into it. I didn't understand why these cards are spiking. I assumed something like Mox Diamond makes sense, but something like um, Repentant Blacksmith, which is I think one and a white for a one, two protection from red from Arabian Nights. I could never get why that's $2 or $3 and why that's going up and why would people would ever want that card? Well, they just want old cards, period, period. And if they can't afford the Moxes and Lotuses, then it's on to the Sarah Angels and Syrian Dragons. They can't afford those. Then it's on to just random legends they had when they grew up. And I get that. I get it. So... On the flip side, we have a few cards that have gone down. So I did want to integrate up and down because a lot of times it's just up. Um, but in future videos, I'll probably have some cards that have gone down as well. Horizon Canopy, there's a reason the Expedition is going down. It's because the oncoming, oncoming reprint. Yes, this card's going to be reprinted. Yes, the non-foil, the regular edition is $90. The Expedition is $140. Let's call it $140. Where do I see them meeting? It kind of depends on Iconic Masters, how much of it is print. From what I've heard, non-WPN stars can get Iconic Masters. I'm not sure if that is true. Um, I'm pretty sure Iconic, if Iconic Masters is like 2017 Masters, then if you own an Ace Hardware store, you can get this product. Uh, and there's not going to be limited in any noticeable way. I mean, it won't be in Walmart and Target, but it'll be everywhere else, right? And it'll definitely be online. So, I don't know, it depends, but should this card really go down, it might be a good time to pick them up. Now, when you talk about the pre-order hype, what are we seeing? We're seeing cards go from 50%. That's kind of what I'm seeing right now. From the original prices people wanted for the card, they're dropping 50% as they realize that there's a lot, there's probably going to be a lot of this. All indications tell me that as much of that this is actually going to be below MSRP when it comes out, and it will be below MSRP for a long time. Uh, Modern Masters, even 2015, was a long time under. I bought a box most recently for 220 on David Adams from Modern Masters 2015. That one, yeah, you could say the Modern Masters isn't as good as, but later we found out it was very good because of the Adrazi. Too good, then they banned it and then became meh in the middle again. So when you talk about uh, magic cards and you talk about the financial aspect of it, just hold for, don't hold more than four of something unless it's on the reserve list or unless it's owed. And that's, that's the key here. These items as collector's items have value beyond their playability. And that collectability has now skyrocketed for certain cards. So if you told me Garo's Cradle, which is on the reserve list, so a lot of you guys make this argument that they can never print stuff on the reserve list. That's just blatantly untrue. They, when I grew up, they printed a ton of stuff on a reserve list, and no one thought it was like uh, any. I think Mox Diamond was reprinted from from artifacts or something like that uh, from the vault. I'm um, I'm pretty sure it was Mox Diamond, uh, and. So the concept that these cards like Gaia's Cradle could never be reprinted or never ever will be reprinted is, I think, incorrect. This is $800, right? This is an $800 foil. Wizards of the Coast understands it's $800. Now, things for Magic are if they continue to not grow, the best way or the fastest way for them to grow, you might not believe it's the best way, is to drop the reserve list and just sell $100 boost packs. Like you think I'm kidding, right? But they could literally sell $100 boost packs and all, you know, there would only be 10 cards in the pack 
are there would only be one you would only get one card and one of the cards could would be just a reprint of a reserve land and then you're just going to gamble which one you get oh you got underground sea 500 bucks great oh you got badlands 40 bucks oh right um and I know this because they've done this. They've done this with Vintage Ma what What's it called? Vin is it called? Yeah, it's they call it a Vintage Masters Online. Magic Online, they've experimented with it. Like, you, if you go to Magic Online, just the share amount. I haven't been on recently, so when I looked over it, the share amount of reprints or retro things that they're doing is a ton, right? Uh, it, it's just a lot. And I think eventually that will come to paper. It might take a few years. It might take a few more bad years of non-growth, but we'll see. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.